Let me guess. You just took a quick look at your Google Analytics account, didn't you? Perhaps your eyes once again gravitated towards those three pesky metrics you've been obsessively tracking for months. Your website's page views, bounce rate, and average time on page, right? And you didn't like what you saw. It's okay, you can tell me. This is a safe space. The good news is that people are landing on your website. The bad news? These same people are leaving your website almost immediately. Why? How can that be? Did the hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars you poured into your website mean nothing? Was it all a waste? Did you just give up on web design and go back to school to learn how to repair AI-powered toasters? Easy there, Tiger. Let's walk through this one together. The truth is, there could be literally dozens of reasons why visitors are leaving your website. Let's break them down one by one. Your website visitors are leaving because they get impatient. Because your website loads too slowly. Google has made it abundantly clear that website loading speed is an important ranking factor. They recognize that you have mere seconds to catch your visitors' attention, and they're not going to wait around. Your website loads too slowly because your hosting sucks. Remember that sweet deal you got on your monthly website hosting? You're only paying $2.99 a month while your friends are coughing up $29 a month. Pfft, chumps. Well, I hate to break it to you, but sometimes you get what you pay for. At $2.99 a month, you're scraping the bottom of the bucket in terms of web hosting. Your website shares a server with thousands of other websites and will be forced to compete for those precious server resources. If you get any decent amount of traffic, you're going to notice a difference, and so will your visitors. Cut out a few Starbucks lattes every month and invest in high quality, super optimized website hosting. Another reason your website loads too slowly is because your images are too large. This is one of the most common mistakes made by both web designers and bloggers alike. Uploading high quality images without optimizing them first is like trying to drive a speedboat while the anchor drags along the bottom of the lake. You're gonna have a bad time. Use a tool like Photoshop to reduce and compress every single image you upload to your website. Another reason why your website is loading too slowly is because your videos are set to autoplay. Autoplaying videos sucks up valuable resources and damages your website's user experience because they're annoying as heck. By all means, use videos, but make sure you give your visitors the option to watch it or not. If you can't create an enticing enough call to action to watch it, then you need to try harder. Another reason why your website loads too slowly is because your website isn't optimized for performance. A lot goes into making a website load blazingly fast. Even if you manage to do everything else right, and you avoided the common snares mentioned before, your website can still be poorly optimized for performance. Have you thought about things like caching on both server side and browser side, content delivery networks, reducing plugins, and simplifying code? Probably not. Which is why you should hire someone to optimize your website for you, or take the time to learn how to do it yourself. It will be well worth the investment. Your website visitors are leaving right away because they get bored. And they get bored because your content is organized poorly. Even if you have a website that loads quickly, you still need it to be, well, interesting. There's no time for a boring website here. And your content is organized poorly because you have huge walls of text. I'm not sure if you've noticed or not, but people don't read a whole lot of books these days. The era of reading page after page of nothing but text is long gone. As our attention spans continue to shrink with each binge watch we subject ourselves to, it's becoming harder and harder to hold a website visitor's attention. Writing a novel's worth of text in one overly long paragraph is sure to scare away even the most loyal of readers. Make your content less intimidating by breaking your text into super short paragraphs. I'm talking one or two sentences short. Keep it short and sweet. And break up your formatting with quotes, italics, bolds, bullet point lists, and yes, even emojis. 
Another reason your content is organized poorly is because you don't have enough images. Speaking of walls of text, a super easy way to break them up is by inserting more imagery into your pages. Telling your story visually is always more powerful than writing about it. Take it easy with the text and use more images, illustrations, vector icons, and graphics in your website design. Another reason why your content is organized poorly is because you use generic stock photos. Does that group of grinning millennials poring over documents in the conference room meeting actually work for your company? No? Then why are they featured on your about page? Using fake stock photos with fake people is, at best, disorienting and confusing for your visitor. At worst, they'll see right through it and take off to your more transparent competitor. Don't be so obsessed with appearing bigger than you are. Be transparent and honest about your story. Connect with your visitors on a more intimate level. And if you must use stock photos, make sure they are unique and high quality and don't feature any people in them. Another reason why your content is organized poorly is because your copy is dull and lacks personality. If someone walked up to you, introduced themselves, then began to ramble on about their age, relationship history, family situation, work experience, medical records, favorite type of pie, etc., what would you think? You'd be looking for the first opportunity to escape. For some reason, many web designers apply the same methodology to their websites. But here's the thing. It's not about you or your business. It's about your visitor. More specifically, how you can help them. How can they benefit from your product or service? Why should they listen to you? What can you do for them? So tell them and do it with some style and flair for goodness sake. Inject some personality into your storytelling. Your website visitors often get bored because your offer isn't compelling. Every search query is a question waiting to be answered. Your job as a web designer is to answer that question. Are you doing it wrong? Your offer isn't compelling because you sound like everyone else. Let's play a game. Let's say I'm in search of a cleaning company to do a post renovation cleaning of my new townhome project. I have a modest budget in mind, but mostly I'm concerned with getting the job done right with quality workmanship. I do a quick Google search and find 13 cleaning companies in my area who offer the same service at similar prices. How do I choose one? After digging a bit further into the websites of these companies, I find the CEO of one of them casually mentions how he's a Montreal Canadiens fan in one of his blog posts. I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan. I now have common ground with one of these cleaning companies and this little nugget of info humanizes their brand in my mind. Yeah, it's really that simple and you may think it's dumb, but mutual interests and common ground is a major factor in how we connect with the people around us. Why shouldn't small businesses be the same? Like it or not, you are a brand now, not just your business. Another reason your offer isn't compelling enough is because your product's benefits aren't clear. Are you selling products or benefits? Apple, and more specifically Steve Jobs, was a master at this. Which one would you buy? Storage for one gigabyte of MP3s or 1,000 songs in your pocket? Tell your visitors how they stand to benefit from your website's product or service. Your website visitors are also leaving right away because they get distracted. And they get distracted because you make it easy for them to be distracted. And you make it easy for them to be distracted because your social media links are too prominent. Our good friends over at Orbit Media put it best when they said, social media icons are merely candy colored exit signs. I couldn't agree more. The entire point of social media is to attract attention and bring people to your website, not the other way around. Featuring your social media icons in prominent places all but guarantees that your visitors will get distracted and leave. By all means, have your social media profiles displayed on your website. Just make sure they are discreetly placed in the footer instead. Another reason you make it easy for your website visitors to get distracted 
is because your embedded YouTube videos link out to cat videos. This is a smaller web design mistake, but still worth mentioning. If you have YouTube videos embedded on your website, make sure you have turned off the suggested videos feature. Another reason you make it easy for your website visitors to get distracted is because they get overwhelmed by your website. Auto-playing videos, flashy animations, sliding images, popping text, cramming every feature under the sun into your website thinking that it somehow improves the experience. Whoa, slow down there. When it comes to good web design, less is more. Use those fancy features sparingly and only when it adds to the user experience. White space is good. Let that text and imagery breathe a little. Remember, don't overwhelm your visitors. Keep it simple. Another reason your website visitors leave your website right away is because they get confused. And they often get confused because your website is designed poorly. I mean, you wouldn't be listening to this episode about why visitors leave your website if your site was designed properly, would you? And your website is designed poorly because your navigation structure is unclear. A clear navigation structure is important for both your visitors and for Google's algorithm. Having a clearly defined hierarchy will help guide your visitors to what they're looking for. If you have more than five or six sections in your navigation menu, you best be asking yourself why. Another reason your website is designed poorly is because you don't have a clear call to action. What do you want your visitors to do when they land on your page? Fill in a contact form, subscribe to your newsletter, follow you on social media, buy a fluffy homemade koala magnet? It may seem obvious to you, but how does it look to your visitors? Go through your entire website from the point of view of a new visitor who knows nothing about you. Then see how obvious it is. You can even ask a friend to do it for you if you don't trust your biased judgment. Another reason your website is designed poorly is because you have too many calls to action. While we're at it, let's talk about too many calls to action. Yes, it is possible to have too many. Have you ever heard of the paradox of choice? It's a simple psychological theory that says too many options lead to paralysis and unhappiness. For example, in one study, a researcher set up a table at a luxury food store and offered shoppers samples of jams. Sometimes the researcher offered six types of jam, but other times offered 24. With the table of 24 jams, people were more likely to stop by for a sample. But the table of only six jams was 10 times more likely to have someone actually buy some jam. This paradox of thinking more options automatically means better options is something I'm confident we have all experienced at some point. And it applies to web design as well. Pick one or two clear calls to action and focus your visitor's attention on those. Any more than that, and you'll paralyze your visitor into thinking he may make a wrong choice. So he'll make no choice at all. Another reason why your website is designed poorly is because the design is outdated. A website that worked in 2008 isn't going to work so well in 2020. Get it updated to modern standards. Or are you still rocking that OG iPhone 3G just fine? Hmm? Your website visitors can also get confused because your website is insecure. Online security is an increasingly worrisome issue. If you're collecting your visitors' personal data, this is even more important, so pay attention. Your website is insecure because your website doesn't have an SSL certificate. In short, SSL certificates are small data files that allow secure connections between your server and your visitor's browser. Most web hosts now provide them for free as they have become an industry standard across the web. Websites without an SSL certificate will be flagged by Google as unsafe. How do you know if your SSL is working or not? Look for the green padlock beside the address bar at the top of the browser. Another reason your website could be insecure is because your website has been hacked. Yes, it's possible for your website to be hacked in a number of ways, actually. But the most common form of website hacking is still the simplest and the most boring. Guessing the website owner's weak password. 
Use a password manager like LastPass to organize your passwords and auto-generate complicated passwords that will be nearly impossible for an algorithm to guess. Your website visitors are also leaving your website right away because they get frustrated. And they get frustrated because you destroyed your website's user experience. Why? Why did you do it? It's okay, I'm sure it was unintentional. Let's fix it. You destroyed your website's user experience because you're still using ads to monetize your website. In my entire life, I've met exactly one person who enjoys advertisements. We are no longer friends. Ads are nearly universally loathed. They destroy your website's UX and reward you with mere pennies to show for it. Monetize your website through literally any other method. Another reason you destroyed your website's user experience is because you refused to get rid of obnoxious pop-ups. I have written hundreds of blog posts. The dreaded pop-up probably gets mentioned in about 63% of them. Visitors hate pop-ups. Google hates pop-ups. I hate pop-ups. And they suffer from extremely poor conversion rates anyway. Removing all pop-ups from your site is as much of a no-brainer as removing ads is. Another reason you're destroying your website's user experience is because your onboarding process is excessive. Did you actually manage to get a visitor to sign up for your website service? Awesome. Did you then scare them away because you demanded to know what their little sister's favorite flavor of ice cream was? Not awesome. If you ask for too much info up front, you dramatically reduce the chances of your visitor completing your onboarding process. Keep it simple. Only ask for info that is absolutely necessary from the beginning. Typically, that means only their name and email. You can get the rest of the info once you've earned their trust. Another reason you might be killing your website's user experience is because your website isn't responsive. Stop me if you've heard this before. Your website looks amazing on the desktop, but when you take a look at it from your iPhone, it's a garbled mess. The majority of website visits already come from mobile, and that's only increasing year after year. If you're not designing your website to look great on any device, and with a focus on mobile first, you're gonna have a bad time. Your website visitors are also getting frustrated because they didn't find what they're looking for. Matching your content with the answers searchers seek is the foundation of modern SEO. And your visitors didn't find what they were looking for because you were more concerned about keywords than search intent. Look, I get it. SEO is critical to the success of your website and keywords still play an important part in that but not nearly as important as they used to be. Google is stinking smart these days, man. They are far better at understanding the context and intent behind every search query. They can focus on the why more than the what. If you're still trying to stuff as many target keywords into a page as possible, you're playing SEO the old fashioned way. It's now all about the search intent efficiently providing exactly what your visitor is looking for. And that's when you'll start to notice those pesky three metrics start to improve. Page views, bounce rate, and average time on page. So, what do you do now? There are honestly a lot of things that can go wrong with your website, and even more reasons why visitors leave right away. I capped it at about 37 because we can't be here all day. But in reality, things are beginning to simplify. The technical aspects of great web design and excellent SEO are becoming less and less important. The new focus is on user experience. So if you're feeling overwhelmed at the prospect of trying to fix all of these errors and mistakes we just talked about on your own, just focus on this one simple thing instead. Will this improve or damage my visitor's experience? If the answer is improve, do it. If the answer is damage, don't do it. There, doesn't that feel better? Much simpler.